In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own Add to Cart animation using Excel VBA code. We're going to build a small application from scratch so that you can see every single step it takes. You can download the VBA code for this video in the description below. Now, if you like this video, then make sure to click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing we need to do is to create our user form to host the controls. So we right click on our project window and select insert and user form. We place the mouse over one of the squares and we drag the user form to make it bigger. So next we set the user form name, user form and we call it store. So this makes it easier later when we want to reference the control. Now we set the back color to white and we're going to set the caption to be bike store. So you can see that appears at the top of our user form. So next we want to add controls. We select view and toolbox. The toolbox contains controls that we can use on our user form. And we're dragging the image one onto our user form. We use three images for our application. One is for the product, one is for moving the product, so that's the animation that you'll see, and one is for the cart. We also need a button, and this is the button we'll click to add to cart. And finally, we have a label, and the label is going to contain the number of items currently in our cart, and this will overlay our image of the cart. So we click on our image, and let's bring up our properties. So we can double click on the properties, and they'll pop out, and you can see now that they're floating in the middle of our screen. So we go to picture, and we click on the three dots, and we select the image that we want. Now, by, by default, it uses clip, so we go to picture size mode and change this to zoom. Now, we change the back style to be transparent, and we change the border style to have no border. And now our image is complete. And then we just change the name image blue, so it's easy for us to reference it later. Now we already created this image, so I'm going to delete it. I'm just going to copy this one and paste it because it's essentially the same image, but just a smaller version. And this is the one that will move during our animation. Now I'm going to set this to the visibility to false as well, so it doesn't appear when we run our user form. Now we add the shopping cart image. And again, we have to make a few setting changes. We change the border style to none. We change the picture size mode to zoom. And then we go to our label. Now our label, I'm going to set the font to a different one. So I'm going to set it to this one that you can see here. And I'm going to set a size to 16 and I'm going to set it to bold. So we now change the caption of the label to be a number. And this lets us see how well this works on our form. So you can see we can move it into a position where it looks proper. And then when we run the code and we change this value, we know that it's going to look OK. So the final thing we want to do is set our button. So we'll call our button blue because it relates to the blue bicycle. We'll set the caption to be add to cart. And we'll set the back color to be a shade of orange. Now that we've created our controls and set the properties that we want, we can now go ahead and start writing the code. The first piece of code that we're going to write is to set the controls to their initial positions and their initial states if required. So we press F7 to view the code of the user form. Now, from the right hand menu, we select initialize. And initialize is the sub that runs when the user form is created. So when we're running the user form code, this is the first piece of code that will run. So we're going to call a sub called reset add to cart, and we'll create that sub down here. The first thing we want to do is we want to set the label cart number to be blank. So this is the label that contains the number of items in our cart. And the second thing we want to do is we want to move the smaller image to the position of the larger image. And this is the position that the animation will take place from. So the smaller image moves from the larger image to the cart. So how we set the position is as follows. We set the left position of the image to the left position of the main image. And we'll just put it halfway between the image. So we add the width divided by two. So the width of the main image divided by two. And we're simply going to move it to the top of 
the main one as well. So in other words, the smaller and the main image have the same top position. And then we call this one. Now, if we have multiple items on our user form, then we call this for each of the different images. And that's how we reset our controls. So now let's start working on our Add to Cart animation. The first thing that we do is we double click on our Add to Cart button, and this will create our click event for that button. So we're going to start by calling the sub move to cart, which we haven't actually created. So what we're really doing is we're starting at the end so we know what we have to aim for. Now all we know at this point is that we have three controls, which is our image that we're going to move, our image cart, and our label cart number. And these are the three that we need to use when we're moving to the cart. And then we'll go ahead and actually write our sub. So when we're creating the parameters, we set the image controls to be controls rather than specific images. And this means that we can pass any kind of control to the sub. So we want to start with the simplest part first, which is updating the label cart number. And this is useful because we can see if our code works when we click on the button. And if there's any simple errors at the start, we can get rid of them without having too much complex code. Now we want to update the caption so that we add one to the value. Now the initial value is going to be blank. So what we want to say is if the initial value is blank, then we want to set the value to zero. And we use the II if statement, which is similar to the if statement in Excel itself. Now once we get back that value, so we're either going to have zero or we're going to have the current caption value, and we want to convert that from a string into a long. So we use the CLong function, and then we want to add one to the value. So if it's blank, we'll get one. And if there's any other number like one, two, three, we'll get the number after that. We run the code to see if it works as expected. So we can just press F5 to run our user form. And we click on Add to Cart, and you can see that it updates the label on the right hand side as we click on the Add to Cart button. So the first part of our code is working correctly, so we can go ahead and work on the animation itself. So from Move to Cart, what we're going to do is we're going to call a class module. Now the class module CLS Cart Animation we're going to create this to do the animation. And the reason we use a class module is that it makes it easier if we want to use cart animation in different projects, we just need to copy in this class module. We're gonna create a sub in the cart called animate. And what we'll do is we'll pass the image control that we're going to move and the cart control to this sub. So we insert the class module and we call it CLS cart animation. And then we create our public sub called animate. And we then add the parameters. So the parameters, again, they're going to take the control that we're going to move, which is an image in this case, and they're going to take the cart control, which again is another image. Now we've got a third parameter, which is optional, and that means the default is set, and this is the distance. So this is the distance that when we animate the object, it'll move each time. The higher the number, the quicker it will move. Now, if you're a bit confused about what is calling what, then you can check out this diagram, which is included in the code download. There are two parts to our animate. The first part is to move the image to the cart, and the second part is to shake the cart. So when the item arrives over the cart, we want to shake the cart to make it look like it's landing in the cart and it's caused this movement. So we're going to have a sub for each one. And the reason we have a sub for each one is that in some cases we might want only to move the cart, and in another case, we might want to use shake cart. So we keep them apart, it makes it easier when we want to use them in the future. So this is our move to cart sub, and this is our shake cart sub. So we've got two optional parameters with shake cart. We've got delay, which is the time between each cart movement, and then we've got shake count, which is the number of times that we want to move the cart. So we want to store the left position because we're going to be moving the cart to the left and then we want to move it back to its original position. So we store that in this variable. And then we create our for loop. So within our for loop, we're going to shake the cart each time until the for loop ends. Now we use sleep here and sleep basically makes the application pause for whatever the given delay is. And that's how the animation works. We pause, we move something, we pause, we move something. And then to the human eye, it looks like it's moving. Now we use the do events, so the do events prevents the application from freezing. It basically says, okay, it's delayed, but continue doing anything else that needs to be done. 
So we add this sleep here. So the sleep is an API function and we just add it here like this. And this gives us access to using the sleep function. So now we've got our shake heart for loop in place with our sleep and with our do events. So we have to write the code to move our item within this for loop. So we move it, we sleep, then we move it again and we sleep and so on until we're finished. So we're going to assign the left position of the control and this will basically move it to that position and we use the if statement so the this is again like the if statement in excel and we're basically saying every second time so modulus 2 equals naught or modulus 2 doesn't equal naught so every second time so it's either in its original position or we're going to move it a little bit to the left and we do that every second time and this gives it the idea or this makes it look to the human eye like it's animating like it's moving so let's run the code to see exactly what happens and you can see that our cart shook. So let's do it again. You can see the cart shakes and see it shakes and updates the value. And all we're simply doing is moving it between two different positions and we're doing it within a delay using sleep. When we're doing the move to cart, we're going to be doing the left and we're going to be doing the top properties a lot. And these are simply two points. So to make our life easier, I'm going to create a type called point. And this will contain the variables X and Y. Now, if you haven't seen a type before, a type is simply a way of grouping variables together. It makes it easier to move them around in our code. Now that we have the point type created, we're going to create two functions as well to make it easier to move between the left and top and our point. So this one control to point will simply take the left and top of a control and convert it to a new point. It simply copies left to x and top to y. And our next function, point to control, is simply giving a point to the control and then moving to control to that position. So in other words, setting the left and top of that control to point X and to point Y. Now we're also going to return the control in this function. We don't have to do it because we're passing as a parameter, but we return it because it makes the code more readable. The image that we're moving is set to be invisible by default. So we must set this to visible at the start. So we simply do this by saying the visible property equals true. And then when we're finished moving the item, we obviously want to set it to be invisible again. So we set the visible property to equal false. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to store the card position and we're going to store it as a point. So this means that we're just storing one variable rather than having to store an X and Y everywhere. And this makes our code much neater. And now we store the start point. And this is so we can return the move control to its starting point when we're finished the animation. And at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to move the control back to its original position. So we're going to move it back to its start point. So in other words, what the point control does is it sets the left and top to the X and Y of the start point. And once we've got this done, what we want to do next is we want to create the loop. And it's within the loop that we're going to be moving the image. We've set the condition to true and we'll be updating this shortly. Now we put in sleep one to pause the application so that every time it moves, it pauses. And then we do do events. So do events means the rest of the application will continue running. There are three parts to performing the cart move animation. And the first one is we get the current position of the image. So this is the small image that we're moving. We get the current position of this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to move it to its next point, which I'll do in a moment. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to move the control to this new point. We use the function move point to to give us the next point. So this is simply a mathematical calculation based on the current point, the final point and the distance that we want to move. So you can see it here. Let's update our condition. What we are saying is keep going while the left of the move control is less than the cart left. So as soon as it reaches the cart, we want to stop doing this move animation. So if we run the code, click on add to cart, you'll see the animation works as expected. So it moves from bike to the cart and then the cart shakes. If you want to try out the code for yourself, then make sure to download it from the link in the description below the video.